Welcome to Amplify. I'm your host, Candace Dorman. On this show, we shine a light on people making moves, grinding, hustling, and being excellent because it's 2020 and there are still a lot of first and onlys across almost every industry. So let's dig in. Our guest has a gift for design, entertaining, and service. She grew up around creatives and spent years being inspired by them, especially her mother, a successful entrepreneur. She has a degree in fashion design, anthropology, and media studies, but most of her experience comes from life. She has a knack for interpreting lifestyle trends and is a tastemaker with beautiful, sustainable concepts that shine through her design work. With her eye focused on community, her initiatives and business acumen have helped push the cultural scene of her small Vermont town to new heights, and she is just getting started. She is a mom, an artist, a farmer, a curator, and an all-around amazing woman to have on your side. Alex, welcome to Amplify. Allie, how are you? I'm so good, Candice. So good to see you. How are you doing? I am really good. I'm so glad that you're here. It's been a long time coming, uh, several decades, a eh, couple decades, I would say, since I last saw you in person. It's, I, it's, that's okay. I think it's great. I think it looks good on us, right? That we can say I, decades of anything. I'm just glad we could reconnect so easily. It was really, really good to hear from you. You too. You too. So why don't we just jump right in? I am so excited to hear about your, the work that you're doing in Vermont is where you are, right? Like in the woods on a farm in Vermont. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your path to becoming an entrepreneur and what you're, what you're getting into these days? Um, Sure. So yes, I did end up back in Vermont, um, my favorite place on the planet. Um, and it was sort of the way that I think a lot of people who spend a lot of time here end up back here is because you can travel around a lot, you can study in a lot of places and you end up finding out that there's a really great life here. And, um, my mission was to figure out how to make a life here work with, um, not a huge booming economy in a lot of different areas. So, um, that took a little creativity to begin with, but, um, it meant, having an idea for a small business that could work in the area that um, I wanted to be. And that's sort of how I ended up back here. And then the, the rest has kind of mm, unfolded and, and been a bit of an exploration in how to stay. Um, and yeah, so I can't wait to talk about it. So good. So uh, that's, the, it's this idea of coming home, right? Like coming home when you've gone out, you've lived in New York City, you've lived in San Francisco and all the big places, but sometimes something just calls you back. Absolutely. And uh, I never thought I'd be saying that. I think when we were um, together in like high school days, I thought, my God, this place is so boring, which is specifically why I advocated to be able to leave um, and ended mm-hmm. up meeting so many great people. And that was also part of sort of becoming who I am was, was always trying to explore other places where I could get better sort of exposure to, um, to what's out there. And, and then lo and behold, and my mom will want to take credit for all of it, but I really love it here as a home, which I never thought I'd say when I was 15 years old, but here we are. (laughs) Right. Of course you're saying, I told you, I told you, this is why we moved here. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's crazy. I love it. So I think of you, we're talking about being an entrepreneur today, talking about being an entrepreneur in a small town as a woman, all of those things I want to get into. But let's talk about your creative side and what it is that you are, that you're, you're doing as an entrepreneur and an artist. Um, so, you know, I have, I think this kind of started because I was one of those people that had like a five page resume, which is really frowned upon. Um, And so with the idea that that was not actually a good look, I was thinking I must just have all of these different interests and I can't figure out why none of these job descriptions really fit who I am. Um, I'm not a morning person. I thought that was something 
that made me not hireable. I was like, this isn't fun <laughs> um, to be in the world where there are a certain amount of expectations for how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. And so I came up with ideas all the time. I mean, I would always have an idea for something and I learned very quickly not to always overshare those things um, because, you know, it ends up sounding like you just really don't know what you're doing. But I think all of the experiences led me to sort of understand that I had something to offer. I had something to give and it always ended up being creative. Um, I taught for almost eight years, which was one of the most uh, stable and exciting jobs I had before kind of trying to go out on my own. And, um, and I had a really great uh, mentor there who knew that I had a lot of things to offer and, um, and sort of helped me through some of the, I think, intimidating uh, ways that we can talk ourselves out of doing things. And that started with like a garden program that I thought would be really great for kids with special needs. And, um, and you know, I, I was talked out of a lot of things also, and I just kind of kept pursuing them and, and saw these things sort of come to life as a teacher. Um, but also like, didn't always really think that I wanted to be a teacher necessarily. Um, it was a great starting point for me to see ideas that I had come to life. And, um, and then I was like, this has been fun. That was wrong too. Cause I ended up leaving a really <laughs> great situation thinking that, you know, I, I don't think I can stay here forever. I want to go explore Boston and do all these things. So anyway, I think, um, what I would, the message here is that you have to sort of let, allow yourself to keep exploring, um, all of your interests, even if you feel like, wow, this could really be um, a stable playing ground that could, you know, create a career path for me. I think I always saw myself kind of doing something different and I didn't know what it was. Um, and it took a lot of employers that I didn't like to work for to make me understand <laughs> that I had to figure out a way to do something on my own. And, um, and I also didn't really know how to do that either. Mm. So um, I think one of the, when you, when you sent me some of the notes about some of the things we'd be talking about, I just kept thinking about how you got to start where you are and you can't necessarily mm -hmm. have the whole story. Um, mm. and, and you also can't imagine that you're going to start where the beautiful part of the story sort of is in your head. Like your vision is not, I the like that. um, so that was sort of how I, I decided we would take a risk and um, come up to this area and just try something really not entirely different. I don't think um, until people started to say that it felt really great and it felt really different, but I opened a little bar and restaurant. Um, it had a shop in it and it felt really cool. People really enjoyed it there. And then I thought, Oh my God, this is a really hard industry. Like, <laughs> absolutely not a hobby and all of my friends in the industry will laugh when people think they can just open up a bar and it'll be so much fun oh, um, like coyote ugly it'll just be great totally. party, party all the time okay and you never have to sleep and what a what a what a wonderful world so at that time i also had uh, a one and a half year old and you know life just kind of started to um unfold in a way that made us <laughs> a question like, what are we doing here? But again, that was the starting point for me to sort of go off um, independently and, and try something that felt a bit risky at an age where you feel like you have a lot of responsibilities and how are you going to make it work? Um, and, and now we're here. And so I think that the rest of the conversation will be more fun because I think it's about allowing yourself to sort of not have to commit to every risk that you take um, mm. in a, in an effort to find what you're really trying to get out of life, you know? That's so key. You don't have to commit to every, every risk that you take. I've, it's, it's, 
it's like a load comes off when you hear that. I don't think many of us believe that, right? You think this is my one shot. If I take this risk, like this is all my money or this is all my goodwill or yeah. because I've had so many other ideas or whatever, I've got to like commit. And sometimes we burn ourselves because you find out however much time in that, oh, snap, maybe this wasn't, I thought it was right, but it wasn't right. And the fear of, of failure or of like admitting defeat keeps us from making the right decision, which is to pivot, right? Because it's yeah. not, it doesn't have to be failure and it doesn't have to be defeat. It could be like falling forward, right? Absolutely. And I think that is obviously the word that we've been hearing the most this year for anybody that is really trying to gauge how to maneuver in the world. Mm -hmm. um, that pivot, I mean, I wish I'd played basketball, but I didn't. I was not really <laughs> that athletic, but I get the move. And it's like, you really have to be um, really ready to try anything. Mm -hmm. um, and that that has been, I think, not to sound tone deaf, because I know that this time in, in people's lives has been incredibly challenging. But for creatives, I think it's been an opportunity to really say, well, what is it that I really wanted to be doing here? Because I have friends who, you know, found their identity through their employment, lost their jobs, and are absolutely... Um, lost for a sense of, you know, self and, um, and, you know, they're, they are looking for that sort of connection to what it is that if I could choose anything, what would it be, you know, and if you ask enough people that you'll find that mm. they maybe haven't thought of it enough, you know, until this point where you have to sort of decide how am I going to spend this time that is changing so much and do something that really feels good and passionate and, um, and, you know, you, it feels like, like who you are. And, and that has been the most significant sort of, um, adjustment that I got to make th this year, which I'm really grateful for, um, because I had to just slam the brakes on. I wasn't trying to, um, get all the jobs and, and, and figure out freelance, um, in a way that made me feel crazy, like maybe I have to move and, you know, what is this? Um, we just kind of stayed home and started making these huge messes of our house. Um, <laughs> and, and that was fun. And I'm like, well, this is definitely not going to go anywhere. Um, but I, you know, spending time with my kid and understanding that that's a huge priority and, and definitely not something that everybody is able to do um, really made my direction and my energy focus on on that flow, like just go with this. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and that's been, you know, the biggest challenge and the biggest reward at the same time. And I think that that's part of it too, is that none of this feels good, like to take these risks that you're not sure about feel very uncomfortable. And the biggest lesson I've learned is like, you cannot, you cannot put that kind of pressure on yourself when you're trying to start something from scratch or um, mm -hmm. small. And, you know, that, if there's anybody out there who needs any any advice, it would be to just like be okay with like that feeling that makes you think everything you're doing is mediocre and not good enough. It's just like it is because it's something. So give it to them. And that's it. <laughs> I love that. I love that because I think as creatives, we all feel that way. Anytime you're gonna like release your thing, your baby of your art in whatever shape or form that is, it feels like, is anybody going to like it? Is, is anybody going to, you know, is only my mom going to like it? Oh, my, my husband said he likes it, but he has to, cause he can't, you know, he can't give me constructive feedback. Right. No, um, possible too. and that fear of like imperfection. Yeah, definitely. And, um, that was the, the curve for me was like, Oh my, you know, what am I doing? I'm just going to put this stuff out there. And I was highly influenced by, um, artists and work that I personally wanted to buy. And, you know, not every artist wants to hear that because, you know, you're like, be, be your own sort of, I don't know, like have your autonomy and, and create your own thing. But I was very highly influenced by work that I loved. And mm -hmm. I was, you know, plastering my walls because I put so many holes in them all the time from all the just r ridiculous amount of redesigning that I do to make myself feel like change is good. <laughs> And I was like, this is a really cool medium. Um, and that's kind of how that that part of my art, artistry right now started in that I was just experimenting with something that I had on hand. Um, fairly large um, 
contemporary pieces that um, are very heavily texturized. I'm using some acrylic paints and um, graphite and all kinds of fun things that I find around the house. And now more recently, I've incorporated elements like lava and sand and um, a lot of just like earthly elements um, that, you know, would remind you of like ceramics. Um, but I'm just kind of using it in a way that feels like a painting. And, um, and it brings me a lot of just like pure therapeutic grounded goodness. And it also happens to look okay. <laughs> I don't know. It looks really great. No, it's um, beautiful. I just had a friend come over and pick up my son so I could chat with you. And she was looking at some of the stuff I had in the studio and I was like horrified, but um, <laughs> that's part of it too. You just have to be like, Oh, and you know, I find myself being like, it's not done or it's like no more excuses. Just let it be, let it yeah. go in the world and, and, and see how it's received. And again, if it doesn't work, you keep experimenting with it. It's very much a part of how we develop who we are and how we feel about what we're doing. And, um, this has been a, a really good feeling for me, which is what I'm going for right now. These days, it's not about, well, it's about everything, emotions and finances and all of the things. But this particular experiment um, has felt really good and authentic to the person that I want to be, which is a good mom who's home, being creative and allowing myself to do something that can that can provide for my family. So... I'm just grateful. It's been really nice. That's awesome to hear. I really love that. That that brings me to this conversation that we had before before we came on air, which was in 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 us as women, as creatives, as entrepreneurs, finding ways to value our work, value ourselves, value our creativity, um, and to not to not brush it or undersell it or minimize it in any kind of way because of that, you know, inherent fear, fear that we always, we always have bubbling up. Can you talk about, about what that journey has been like for you to, to go from not being sure about this thing to where you said, just like put it out there in the world and why that's important? Well, I mean, I, would be a hypocrite if I just said, don't undervalue yourselves, ladies. Um, it's really hard. I find myself, you know, someone will come over and say, oh my God, I really love that. I really want to buy a piece from you. And I'm like, okay, like maybe we can trade. You know, like I, I immediately go to this place, <laughs> especially if it's people that I know, family, friends, you know, especially in the beginning, I thought to myself, they're just in good faith trying to support something that I'm doing. And, and that's great. But also I felt like, Oh, how can I put a number to anything that I do? And that's not even just with some of the stuff that I'm producing now. That's with everything I've ever done ever. It always felt like if I got the job, I was so happy to get it that it might as well be a favor because I was just happy to be doing it and I'll get the experience and you know, we'll talk about the price later. And it's like nobody ever approached me being like, oh, sure, I'll paint your walls and then we can, you know, I'm not going to give you an estimate. Like th this is a job. So um mm -hmm. I feel like that is a huge part of what we do. And the only thing that I can say to that is get your numbers down and put them in a very uh, specific list of offerings, like a menu. And it's a mm -hmm. lot easier to talk about the worth of anything that you're doing, whether it's a service or a product or anything, when you don't have to have a face-to-face -face verbal conversation or anything that becomes personal about it. Because if you've mm -hmm. decided what, you're selling is worth, then that's, that's, that's your value for you, you know? And, mm -hmm. and there's really nobody out there, like we talked about, that's going to be like, eh, I don't really think that that's worth it. You know, they'll be like, well, maybe <laughs> I can't afford it or wow, that's such a great deal. But nobody out there is saying, honey, go back and check your price list. Like not, <laughs> it's not happening. So I feel like that has been, and it will continue to be a learning curve for me. And that all comes back to being able to organize what you're selling or the services that you're offering in a way that is really concrete. Um, mm. And a lot of times when I'm doing something new and have to charge for it, there are people out there, obviously, that have been doing it and the prices are online. I mean, you can find out what it is and the value of it in the industry. So why not just, you know, follow suit? And I don't think necessarily that, you know, how long you've been doing something or how little time you've been doing it really determines 
that either. I think, you know, it's, it, you've really just got to say, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing and this is how much it costs. And thank you very much. And cheers. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Either you want it or you don't, right? Yeah. I mean, that's it. That's it. I, I love it. I like this point that you're making about putting things on paper. I find myself, uh, you get, you're, you're like really confident when you're writing it down, right? And then you start looking at it and you're like, well, what if they buy two? They'll probably want a deal. And then, and then you start doing all of this like weird math that's unnecessary. And so even though I thought I knew, I decided what my value was and I knew what my prices were, when they start asking questions, I, I'm trying to like mentally remember what's the math that I did and how many did I take off for two or three or what about, right? And you're just like, <laughs> it's yeah. too much. It's too much. And you end up making yourself look un- unreasonable and unsure. And people right. s- smell that insecurity and will just pounce on it, right? <laughs> or will leave you behind. Yeah. And it will. It will have an effect on, you know, that initial, which n- none of us can really feel like when we walk into a room, how that energy is received, right? But we have this idea in our head that like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing it right. I'm not good enough. And that's got to go in the, in those interactions. Like we said, I mean, whether you're faking it until you make it, or you actually just feel like you need to have more time in an industry before you can really present yourself at your full price, I say, stop that. Just <laughs> go full throttle, go full throttle. And you know, <laughs> you, if you find in six months time, you haven't gotten a job, then maybe you need to reanalyze that. But honestly, I think that we really need to just say, what I'm doing is worth it. And I'm putting in so much energy. I mean, so much of the time that I spend on, on an hour of a project is really in my eat, sleep and, you know, stay awake of, of, uh, everything that you, that we do, that we love doing these multi-passion projects really takes everything out of you. You know, I mean, even just thinking about having a conversation with you, I was like, so inspired that I thought about it all day. I was like, okay, <laughs> so this is my, this is my, my thing for, for my brain to just completely obsess about. And, um, and Hey, you know, we're, we're both having a good time doing it, but it's like, that's what we do with everything. I think as creatives, um, you know, unless you've been doing it too long and then like do something else. But really, I think we've got to stop, <laughs> stop underselling yourself, especially women. I think that men don't have this problem. I'm sorry to say it. I don't think they do. Um, I think it's a, it's a really strange, uh, it's something that we have to evolve out of. And, and I think we're doing it by having the conversation about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so this leads me to this, this question about managing your side hustles, right? Because it it is the lucky few of us who are able to make one side hustle passion project pay for everything, right? Because at the end of the day, we are responsible for something, right? We are responsible for the bills. We're responsible for our portion of the bills or all of the bills. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to get over is that, my thing does, my thing can also make money. It's not, oh, I just like to do this. And sometimes I make money and, but it's, but it's not real money. It's like right. real money is real money. Right. Yeah. And so how do we make it if we're doing multiple things to manage the different things that we're doing and, and, and manage the way that we, we speak about ourselves so that it doesn't come across as, oh, I'm flighty and I do all of these things. No, this is a organized set of, offerings that me as a conglomerate of one that I offer. So that was a long way of asking you in all the things that you do between artists and interior design and, and um, all the things that you do, how do you manage them and how do you present them forward? Um, That's a good question. I am still really reaching for the answer, but, um, but the, the reality is, you know, I think that, um, time right now is like irrelevant. So I think when we're, when we used to sort of put ourselves in this like nine to five sort of that's, that's when we work kind of thing. And for me, especially I have a four-year-old, um, but I, I don't have these like really specific pockets of time that allow me to be 100% focused every week. You know, it's always changing. And I think, um, looking at every week, or however you need to schedule the thing that you're doing is really important to just like create those nuggets of time where you can really dedicate yourself 
to certain things. But it's a hard it's a hard uh, question to answer just because it really depends on what the project is and 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 everything is dependent and, and I think the only way to stay not crazy while you're trying to manage this time is to just create those calendars have those reminders and never sleep maybe I don't know if that's like the, like, like the best <laughs> I mean, we're moms. Um, we never sleep anyway. Never sleep. So the balance, I think, for me has been like, I'm not working on Sundays. Like, I'm not doing it. So sorry. Mm. But um, there are, you know, maybe some exceptions to that. But honestly, I think um, the other part of this, which is more important than how I schedule anything that I'm doing, is being able to say no to things that will overwhelm mm. the way that you're trying to navigate. And especially nowadays when you want to take on anything that you can, and this is in any field. If someone's like, come clean my house and can you babysit my kid because you're just home and, and you, you've got time, anything that you're doing that feels, um, you know, at all anxious like anything that gives you a sense of like how am i going to do this might need to take a step back and dial it down mm, um I and like I, I found myself doing that especially over the course of this summer when i was like i'll just take on all this stuff and then i'll do it like while my kid is i don't know lost because i can't do both so um <laughs> think <laughs> Think in the, the woods, I might add. <laughs> I the same way you did like this very elaborate question asking, my elaborate response is like, I have no idea how to do this. I really don't. I honestly <laughs> just think you make it work and you do it however you can. It might be like in your car. I mean, anywhere. You just, it, it, luckily we have, you know, when it comes to having to respond to emails and trying to book things. But I found myself dropping a ball on a lot of things actually because I was trying too much to take on anything that anybody asked me to do you know it could be a mm. youtube video they, they need to help film i mean i i will have to probably and this is the i'm so glad you asked me this question you can like delete this whole segment later because i sound like a crazy person but i want to get to a place <laughs> really know like we talked about i know what i do and what i'm what i'm good at like don't ask me to do this other thing and have me say yes to that when that's not really what i do right so I find that when when you are surrounded by people who know about anything that you offer in a creative realm, they're going to ask you for your opinion or they're going to ask you to help with something or they're going to pay you, whatever it is. And you've got to know, like, do I even like doing that? Is that even my thing? Like, am, mm. I, am I taking this on because I feel like I should take any work at any time, no matter what? And I found now that I'm able to, because of that experience of wanting to just absolutely run away, that... You have to just take on jobs that you know you can do and that you can do well. And if not, you delegate and you find the guy that does it or the lady and you say, listen, I know this great graphic designer and she's really good at this and let me help you with this. And that's how we do this. we got to collaborate and you got to ask for help. I love that a lot. I mean, I think you said so much just by saying learn how to say no, right? Yeah. That That yes, I can do that, but I don't want to do that. And I don't think we give ourselves the space. <laughs> I really don't think we give ourselves the space to say no. Uh, we're so eager to please. We're so eager to help. We're so eager to take on as much as we can because somehow that sometimes that uneasy feeling. I, I know a lot of people like to say, oh, I work the best when I'm overwhelmed or like when I have so much to do, that's when I work the best. And I think it's a lie that we were sold that somebody said it once uh, and they made it sound really good. And I realize now that that's anxiety and that anxiety doesn't feel good and that I feel much better when I am doing something that I feel, you know, this this line between confidence and excitement about yeah. learning, right? So yes, you want to be able to take a few um, risks in your work that allow you to grow, but not so much that now it's taking you six hours to do something that should have only taken two, right? Because- And so that <laughs> point about stress is 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 valuable. I, I would actually agree because I think what I missed in my spiel was deadlines. Like if you have a deadline, I mean, I might wait until- tomorrow to do something for Friday, but like that is going to happen. Cause you know what I mean? It's like, you got, you got to give yourself points mm -hmm. 
of reference to just get get the work done and whatever that means. And then sometimes you got to be okay with being like, I, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, it's just not going to happen. When right. you, um, but yeah, saying no. I one, love it. Saying no, like not even needing to know everything about anything. You know what I mean? It's like finally just deciding, like, I don't even have to have this conversation with this person about this thing. Like, I don't mm. need, just because I know and I have some maybe just like toning it down, saying no, taking <laughs> steps back, letting other people facilitate projects. <laughs> beautiful thing. So beautiful thing. I love what you said about collaboration because it it comes into play. You know, I I think it's a probably a, a fine line between collaboration and bartering, right? But I think that there's a place, there's definitely a place for bartering, especially now. Uh, but there's also a point where people have to make some money because some things can't be bartered, right? Like Stop and Shop is not trying to hear that I know how to <laughs> interview people, right? Sure. <laughs> right. I'll tell you something. Living in Vermont, there was a time in this when COVID started that I was like, um, so it's barter culture now. That's what we're doing. Everybody's just going to be like, here are my potatoes. <laughs> The plan, but um, and it it actually you know it can work, and I think creatively that's fun if you really value what the other person is offering as either a service or a product. I found myself in a couple situations where someone's like, "Oh, I'd love to do a trade," and I'm thinking to myself, "Yes, that would be nice, but I don't actually want that thing that you're selling." Mm. Um, and I think again, it all depends on where you are in your business and and where you are in just your professional development. But another reason to say no, it's like, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I love what you do. There's nothing, no offense taken here, but I don't need that for this. And so right. And, and on the flip side of that, though, it is so important to be able to engage with the other creatives in our field, like yourself and, um, and, and talk about ways that even if you're just having a conversation about, you know, we're not having these big discussions um, in the boardroom, but, you know, just sending somebody a little message and being like, how's this going? And how do you feel about this thing that I'm doing? And, you know, wanting the feedback also, because that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of um, something you have to decide if you actually want to hear the truth about the, wor the work that you're doing. But um, I love the idea that we can find ways to collaborate and, and make these bigger projects come to life and help other businesses with whatever their visions are and consultations on that. And then know somebody who can do part of that project that you don't have to take on yourself. It's really much more fun that way. I like that. I like that. And now because you are a expert lifestyle curator, I'd love to leave viewers with uh, some go-to tips. Okay. Well, there's two things that I wanted to talk about here. One is I remember one time a while, like when Instagram like first came out and somebody kind of in passing was like, oh, like everything she does is so staged. And I was like, yeah, that is like what brings me a lot of sort of uh, creative joy is to create these environments for my own life in my own home that are beautiful. And, um, you know, no, I don't like make my kids sit around and, and do things for hours on end ever. Actually, everything feels very natural and authentic. But to the other point of that, so staging your life is not a bad thing. It's creating environment that you want to be in. And, and if that feels stressful, then you just, I mean, you guys cannot see the other side of this room. Okay. So let's <laughs> not pretend that this place looks like all of, you know, these nice lines and no clutter and everything is so lovely. But um, the other thing is that I, I really dislike when people talk about like, oh, like, you know, people on social media, like everything's fake. That's not their real life. And for me, I'm like, of course not. But I don't want to see pictures of like your trash can overflowing. I want to see mm. the beautiful aspects of life. And that's what we share with each other. And especially when we're in, um, not just professionally, but personally, you know, I want to see people's joys and, and, and celebrate with them um, the beautiful trips that they take and the food that they're eating and whatever it is. And I really find it hard to understand the criticism about that being what we want to portray. It's, it's, of course, our lives are not perfect. And of course, the toilet's overflowing and things are <laughs> falling apart. But um, I really hope that we can adjust ourselves a little bit on that and not be 
saying that people are not authentic or their their lives are fake and it's not really like that. It's like who cares? Of course, they, they, we don't need a. They're not on a reality TV show. It's a platform for us to share. So, um, as far as being able to really curate a nice sort of grid that you feel like that looks nice. Um, Photographers are really great at that. So they um, know some. I think knowing some photographers has been really lovely for me because those are other collaborations where, you know, I might need help with um, a staging and they might just want to be involved in new projects. Um, but if you don't have that at your fingertips, I think really curating just in your own life with these beautiful devices that we have that are no longer even actual cameras. I mean, they are, but they don't feel like it. Like, you don't need to take this around and go. That would be fun on yeah. vacation, but you pull this out of your back pocket and you make these beautiful memories and then you really select high quality pictures that you get and, you know, don't overdo it. You don't have to overpost. You don't have to, you know, I don't want to see a blurry grilled chicken. Like, I don't, I just don't. <laughs> Somebody else might, but I'm just saying, like, you know, the, we can all be professional eyes when it comes to photography I think in terms of and don't any of my photographer friends tell me that I'm sorry I said that but we can all have <laughs> a vision for how we want things to look and you know there are some days where I'm like I really want to post something that shows um you know what what today was about or what yesterday was about or whatever and there's like a thought that goes into it and it's not just like snapping the picture and then putting it online which I think you know Facebook is nice for that with families and friends and things. But if your platform that you're starting is on Instagram, I think it's really important to like dial it back and, and think about what are the, the, the special moments that you want to capture and take 1000 pictures and pick one. And mm. then, you know, that's how we kind of um, start to navigate what our vision is for this aesthetic that we create. And it could be, I mean, there are so many out there that I'm like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And I, I'll never, you know, it's not me. That's not my life. Mm. And that's, um, and I, I'm just glad that they're out there. You know, people like us want to be continuously getting inspired by these visuals that are that are inspiring. So we want to see beautiful things. And especially nowadays, that is so important, I think. It, I think it does, when people are like, oh, that, that brings us down. There are some studies about like, if you're, you know, resentful and jealous, I don't know. I don't feel like that. I feel very mm -hmm. inspired and very uplifted by seeing other people's beautiful lives. And I hope that we can start to, create a culture that's more like that because I think that that kind of inspiration is what we need more than anything. And I truly believe that. I mean, I really, I look at these beautiful women and I'm like, Oh my God, how amazing they are. And I don't think for one second, I wish I was them. I just think how nice that I get to have a, a window, like a, what are those people called that look in the windows? Gawkers? No, I don't know. <laughs> they, whatever it's called. But I'm just like, you know, we get to see into people's lives and I think that's so romantic. So I, I love, I love, 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 love when people share. Just don't overshare and, and, and keep your pictures clear. You have the device now. Mm. It has the technology. Clear photos are king. Um, you know, Lightroom is great for presets if you're not really handy with um, photography and, and you feel like you want to, you know, create something that feels uniform. That's kind of a fun place to start. Um, so you're not just using Instagram filters, which I think can kind of actually not uh, amplify your photography. So things like that. <laughs> but honestly, you know, it's really about feeling confident about what you're sharing. I had somebody say to me, oh, like all these self-indulgent posts and you know whatever it is and it's like just brush those comments away this is your mm. this is your outlet this is your journal this is your expression this is the way that we communicate these days and i don't think that there's anything wrong with it um and i mean i might take that back there's a few things wrong but it, ultimately <laughs> ultimately you know you're if you're selling something it's a great place to sort of start your brand um, and get some visibility. And, and I think it's a, it's a great platform for, um, a lot of people professionally and personally just to be able to share. So that's the long one, but here we go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've had such a good time talking with you. I've learned so much and I'm so glad to see you this way. It's just, it's like you said, it is catching and it makes me feel good to see other people winning. So I'm really excited. Why don't you tell people where they can find you if they'd like to learn more about you and what um, you do? So yeah, for now, I mean, we were just talking about Instagram. You can find me, the North Country Mama on Instagram. Um, and that is where 
I have lots of little links to other projects that I'm working on and things that I'm involved in. And for now, that's where you can capture some of my artwork. Um, but yeah, just, you know, slide into my DMs and let me know if you need anything about design or just <laughs> chat about motherhood. Um, it's, it's a fun platform and I've met a lot of really great people through it. So I definitely encourage people to find me there. Thank you. That's great. And, and your artwork, when, when can we start to see some of that somewhere so that people can buy it when they're ready? Yeah. So I have been, um, really, uh, luckily consumed with commission. So like everything that I make is really specific to a customer that is, ah. Um, which is why I don't have a huge inventory yet, but um, it. we have a show coming up locally this month and um, I've had to produce more um, pieces than I had in the past, which is really exciting. And I think once we can get that stuff photographed, I'm really looking forward to putting it online and having that be um, a place for people to connect with, with some of the work I'm doing. But I mean, I can't complain because right now I, I am just like hustling, baby. It's like a... <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it, right? I heard your mom say, you can't say that you didn't ask for it because you did. And so it's the universe provides. That's it. it. Oh my God. And it's so abundant. And what a beautiful way to end. It is so abundant and there's enough for everybody. You just have to really put your energy where the flow is, you know, and just like let yourself go. And, and that's really important. Focus your energy on the flow. I love it. So, uh, I can't wait to have you back on the show. Please do come back on the show. I'd love to have you. Thank you, Candace. It's so fun. I wish we were closer, but I'll see you soon, hopefully. I know. <laughs> I will. I, as soon as outside opens, we will we will meet in Boston. It's going to be great. <laughs> love it. So, so until next time. Bye.